away and came back and then you're like oh yeah this is awesome why don't i come and see this you know sooner yeah yeah <laughs> and roger so. mentioned something that i wanted to touch base on because a lot of the listeners may not um have ever heard it before and he said it was interesting because when he was going into italy he had to deal with something called slot times yeah now, that's something we here in the u.s don't hear much of uh we have uh, you know atc flow management that will give us a ground delay sometimes uh to get into an airport that's congested and you'll have flow control. Uh, we hear like flow or edicts, estimated departure clearance times. Mm -hmm. But we don't often hear slot times. And that's something that you do hear quite a bit in Europe. Now, I, I took a look at what this was. And the FAA defines it uh, in terms of slot administration or slot definition. And according to the FAA, in the context of an airport uh, coordination, a slot is an authorized to either take off or land at a particular airport on a particular day during a specific time period. This authorization is for a planned aircraft operation and is distinct from air traffic control clearances or similar authorizations. Slots, or limits on the planned aircraft operation, are a tool used in the United States and around the world to manage air traffic at extremely busy airports and to prevent repeated delays that result from too many flights trying to take off or land at the same time. Around the world, airports are designated at levels indicating their degree of congestion. Level 1 airports have sufficient, have sufficient capacity to meet the demand. Level 2 airports may have some periods when demand approaches one or more capacity limits. But a voluntary schedule facilitation process prevents systemic delays. Level 3 airports have demand for airport infrastructure that significantly exceeds the airport's capability or capacity during the relevant periods and without controls. Would have unacceptable systemic delays. Level 3 airports are under slot control and mm -hmm. require advanced approval to operate during slot controlled hours. Now Roger mentioned that he had like a two hour delay because of slot time. So before he could take off from wherever he was, and we'll be really looking forward to hearing about this uh, on his return on the show uh, when he gets back, and they told him, well, you have a slot time, so you have to arrive at a certain time, so we're going to delay your flight two hours from when you intended to take off so that you can arrive at your destination exactly during your window. Mm -hmm. So that's what a slot time is. Um, really interesting. Yeah, it is. And, and, uh, to bring that across the, uh, the pond, so to speak to the United States, you know, the airports in the New York and, uh, Washington area are airports that are heavily slotted airports. So, um, and, and those can be quite profitable. I think the airlines actually buy the slots somehow. I mean, I, obviously I don't know all the details of the business end of that, but, um, you know, these slots are very valuable to the airlines. And, and, you know, if you to build a network in those regions, you know, you want to have certain slot times so that you can connect your passengers in inbound and outbound from those airports. And um, that's right now um, one of the um, highly contentious um, issues going on between two airlines, uh, one of them being Legacy. Um, in, in the New York area and Washington area where they joined alliance with another airline to, uh, to bring more passengers uh, on our airplanes and as, as well as their airplanes. And um, right now, I guess it's going to be going to court. <laughs> I don't know the, all the details about it. But just to give you an idea, you know, that, that happens in, in the United States also. So anyway, yeah, I thought I'd yep. bring some of that to light too. You know? Yeah, and and Juan uh, Sosa, who we've had on the show, yeah, watching you, watching <laughs> you over there at uh, Jet Azul. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, you know that Jet that Azul, is a pretty right. uh, contentious point, as you mentioned. Um, and yeah. when you have a congested area, you know, JFK, Laguardia, uh, New Jersey, Newark, mm -hmm. uh, even Washington, Jersey, Reagan, Reagan, yep. yeah, and. Uh, 
you know, th those are airports that are growing and they yeah. just do the airspace, the infrastructure just isn't there. We've been talking about an air traffic control system in the United States that is overloaded using 1970s technologies. Um, and they need to both improve the technology modernize it which there are millions if not billions of dollars going into that system as we speak to improve the technology we are starting to see a lot of that in the industry with air traffic control uh, a lot of it has to do with gps based um, navigation equipment that really helps them out and also now with the mandate the mandated uh, adsb uh, procedures mm -hmm. where the airplanes talk to each other and therefore talk to ATC and and they get yeah. a better picture overall of traffic management. Yeah. So with all these rules that are being set into place and all this technology, that is helping. However, population is growing and yeah. it, it seems to be growing in already yeah. populated areas. <laughs> yeah, and I think probably the, the other thing which I, I just thought about this while we're talking about it is – you know, the whole idea behind the slot is to pre prevent any one airline from having a monopoly in that airport. You know, so um, let's say Legacy Airlines being the size that it is, has the power and the capability to overwhelm the airport with its presence. And the way that the, um, the way that they combat that through the DOJ and DOT and all that is 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 only allow them to have certain slots. In other words, they can only have a certain amount of flights going in and out of that airport, and they have to allow other air, airlines to operate out of that airport um, and you know basically compete with them. So that's kind of what that slot thing is all about. You, you own the slot that you have, and you can sell it to a, another airline or a company that's willing to pay for it at whatever price you're willing to do business at. But, you know, so for Roger over there, you know, those are, those um, slots for him in Europe are pretty much the same thing. You know, they, they, he needs to be slotted into that, to that airport because all the other airlines are, you know, are pretty much owning and buying up those slots so that they can get their passengers in and out. And, you know, Roger being a, a, a user of the system still has the right to get in and out. So they'll offer him a slot. And I'm sure the fees over there are probably landing fees and, and all that stuff are probably, you know, pretty substantial. And, and obviously his, <laughs> his owner and his operator is going to absorb the cost of that. But, you know, I couldn't imagine how, how much it costs. I'm actually kind of curious because I, I know if you land here in Dallas and, you know, yeah, just a general aviation airplane, you know, you, the landing fees are quite hefty as opposed yeah. to landing at some of the, out, you know, the smaller airports on the um, outside of the Bravo. But, um, yeah, I could have yeah. probably hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to land an airplane there. Yeah. Yeah.